Members, the Right Honourable, the Lord Mayor. <coughs> Meeting of the Adelaide City Council on Tuesday the 26th of April 2017. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. The Council public meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by Council, including transferring outside <coughs> Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Kaurna people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respect to Elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge they are of continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the Adelaide City Council. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. Members of the day after Anzac Day, I ask you to remain standing and uh, in silence, in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country at sea, on land and in the air. Thank you, members. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. <laughs> members, thank you. Welcome to the meeting of the City of Adelaide, Wednesday, the 26th of April. Uh, time is 6.07pm. Uh, Welcome to our acting CEO, Steve Matthewson. Welcome to our gallery. It looks rather lopsided, ladies and gentlemen. The chamber might fall over. There's no one on the other side. Bensian's here to help correct the weight. Um, members, item five, the apologies and leave of absence. I understand we have no apologies and no leave of absence, so my, my apologies. Councillor Maloney, of course, did um, advise us in advance that she'd be absent due to illness from tonight's meeting. We wish her speedy recovery. Um, members, item six, which is confirmation of minutes from the meeting held on the 11th of April 2017. Councillor Phil Martin, thank you. Mover, can I have a seconder? Councillor Sue Clarehan, any debate about the minutes, members? I'll put that immediately before you to adopt. Those in favour, those against, we will carry. Thank you, members. Members, public forums and deputations. Members, I had two deputations received, of which the first was from Ms Kelly Henderson, um, but based upon the fact the deputation was not pertaining to a matter on your council agendas this evening, um, I refused it. That would otherwise be a public, uh, a public forum. Uh, and another deputation from Dr Dolman, uh, which I understand the matter which Dr Dolman wanted to speak about will be considered at the next council meeting, so Dr Dolman has been advised, please join us and have your deputation at that meeting. Public forum from Kelly Henderson, uh, which I would otherwise allow, um, but I don't think Ms Henderson is with us at the public gallery, so I will keep the meeting moving in the interest of time. Thank you, Kylie. Uh, 
Members, I'll move on then. Uh, so that takes care of item 8, which is petitions. Sorry, no, it doesn't. Item 8.1, which is a petition regarding the non closure of the uh, Adelaide Aquatic Centre. Uh, members, we have a petition to note and accept. So Councillor Martin would like to move. Can I uh, have a seconder, please? Councillor Moran. Councillor Martin, would you like to speak to the petition, noting that typically with a, receiving a petition, it would be questions? Okay. Councillor Moran. Members, any questions regarding the petition? Deputy Lord Mayor. Not a question, Lord Mayor, but if I may, I'd just like to make a comment for, for the benefit of the gallery and the press and maybe anybody who might foolishly be watching this from home. <laughs> um, just to indicate that um, I just wanted to reassure those people who have signed the petition and others who have expressed some concerns about the future of the Aquatic Centre that there are no current plans to make any changes to the Aquatic Centre and that there will be no uh, uh, substantial changes to the uh, operation of the, of the aquatic centre. There might be some operational changes, but no substantial changes to the operations of the aquatic centre without there being full community consultation. Just as we're going out to community consultation at the moment on the um, on the future of the golf course, if there's going to be any significant changes at the aquatic centre, there will be full community consultation about that. And I'm just really keen that the public uh, are made aware of that, particularly because. Um, there have apparently been, um, there's been some consequences in terms of numbers, the number of people who are using the facility, people who are obviously concerned about its future. And I just want to reassure people that it, it is continuing to operate as is, business as usual. Um, we want people in there swimming and, and using the facility as much as they can. And if we're going to make some changes, we'll let them know and ask their views. Just pop into CrossFit Council and ask them. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, any further questions about item 8.1? Councillor Martin, summing up? Members, I put this forward. You to note and accept. Those in favour? Those against? We will carry item 8.1. Uh, which members takes us on to item 9, and item 9.1 most particularly, the Audit Committee report and recommendation from the meeting held on the 21st of uh, April 2017 uh, regarding the terms of reference. Uh, moved by Councillor Philip Martin. Can I have a seconder, please, members? Councillor Slama, Councillor Martin, do you wish to speak to him? No, it's not. Okay. Councillor Slama, yes. members, any queries, questions or debate? I'll put it for you for the vote. Those in favour? Those against? We will carry that item. Thank you, members. Uh, members, Lord Mayor's report, which is item 10. Uh, members, in the last four weeks, have, well, we together have hosted a number of civic receptions, including Zonta Club Women, Women of Achievement Awards in the Banqueting Room, City of Adelaide Long-Term Businesses with over 100 businesses represented. Members, I must say, um, very special thanks to our economic development team, who did a lot of work uh, working uh, with our many businesses throughout the City of Adelaide to spread the word in terms of that event. It was very well patronised and very much appreciated from the feedback I've certainly received, so thank you. And that's where we acknowledged long-term business owners in the City of Adelaide, of which there were many. I think one dating back to 1800s. So fifth generation family business. Uh, we And Councillor Abiyad, you'll be very pleased to know that the um, uh, civic reception we held for the Young Australian of the Year, Paul Vasilev, where I acknowledged you and thanked you uh, for moving that, um, was a great success and uh, greatly appreciated by Paul and his family and his friends and I think indeed a great accolade for what he's done for South Australia nationally. So thank you Councillor Aviad, greatly appreciated on behalf of your fellow members. Um, members, in less than six months the City of Adelaide will host our largest ever convention, the International Astronautical Congress. So on the 12th of April, uh, and thank you members for joining me, a number of you did, we hosted a luncheon in the town hall for the organisers of this event. And I understand that this has uh, got a significant economic impact for the City of Adelaide and its hotel rooms and its restaurants and its taxi drivers and everything else. So, uh, terrific knowledge economy event for the City of Adelaide. Thank you. 30th anniversary of the Australian Seat Games, which of course started in Adelaide 30 years ago, I learnt, uh, was held throughout our parklands over Easter. Um, and there were 1,400 competitors and some 10,000 attendees. And they served, I understand, up to 40,000 free meals, which, again, I've learnt is the Sikh tradition. Um, so uh, Indian restaurants and supermarkets right around Australia donated everything. So it was an extraordinary uh, uh, 
outcome in terms of logistics and uh, much appreciated by our many tourists who joined us in Adelaide over Easter. On the 20th of April, Adelaide Town Hall hosted a Legion of Honour ceremony in the Queen Adelaide Room on behalf of the Consulate of France, honouring three South Australian World War II veterans for their efforts in the liberation of France. And the French ambassador in Canberra, who visited us at that event, will be finishing his term after three years. Um, uh, Christophe Le Courtier, and uh, I think we've built very strong relationships with the uh, consulate. Uh, in Canberra, who's visited us many times. Uh, on the 30th of March, I spoke at the Connect Expo in Melbourne about the importance of smart cities. As I understand, Councillor Abbiat has spoken at similar events for us. Uh, enhancing customer service experience and creating competitive advantage and attracting talent and investment into Adelaide. And there's quite a large audience at that event in Melbourne. I provided the official welcome at the ASEAN Business Forum at the Adelaide Convention Centre on the 31st of March. Uh, and thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor Hender, for hosting the City of Adelaide Welcome Reception to the ASEAN Delegation on the 30th of March. Uh, I know that was very much appreciated by the delegates. 1st of April, uh, not only did we sell a piece of uh, land to Kangaroo Island, but uh, I also attended the community uh, event organised called Hound Wave, which was the Adelaide West End Association event held in Light Square. 1,400 people and 800 canines attended that event. It was a great success, a great success and a great community event. 2nd of April, members, council hosted a thank you event for the City of Adelaide volunteers at the Mayfair Hotel. Uh, great chance to recognise our 124 volunteers who work in our various visitor information centres. On the 10th of April, I hosted a Heimley Street East stakeholder meeting at GU Filmhouse, the old Greater Union Filmhouse on Heimley Street to provide stakeholders with an update on various operational measures that we have implemented to improve the presentation and cleanliness of Heinley Street. Thank you, Tom McCready, for your work. Greatly appreciated. Nick Darvill and co. Um, on the 13th of April, um, uh, I attended an announcement where the City of Adelaide is being partnered uh, in conjunction with the State Government with the City of Manchester in the UK. And it's simply, it's simply to exchange knowledge uh, with regards to sustainability measures that our city and our state is taking, and so is the city of Manchester. 12th of April, I welcome the US Acting Ambassador James Caruso as he headed a delegation of key defence and technology sector businesses visiting Adelaide in South Australia. Uh, it was a good opportunity to explore trade and other investment opportunities between the USA and, yes, and uh, Adelaide. Uh, on Easter Sunday, members, uh, and I do encourage you to uh, attend these events, we hosted in upstairs in the auditorium an Australian Angels for the Homeless event, which was extraordinarily well. We had about 250 people. The homeless community joined us at Town Hall um, on Easter Sunday, as you know they do on Christmas Day in the meeting hall out the back. So uh, we thank the organisers for that event. 20th of April provided a welcome address at the Local Government of Association OGM and uh, yesterday the Lady Mayoress and I attended the Anzac Day Dawn service at the National War Memorial, the Lighthouse, the Light Horse Commemoration, the Anzac Day March and the service at the uh, Cross of Crat uh, Sacrifice in um, Pennington Gardens. This morning I attended the International Guide Dog SA Awards at Government House where I provided a speech of thanks and presented the awards. Uh, in conjunction with the Chairman of Guide Dogs South Australia and Northern Territory. Members, can I please ask a member to move that be accepted? Councillor Clarehan, seconded by Councillor Corbell. Any questions, members? I put that for your consideration. Those in favour? Thank you very much, members. Appreciate it. Apologies if that was a little bit lengthy, but it's indeed been a very busy month. Uh, members, I have reports from councillors in item 11.1. .1. Councillor Clarehan, you'd like to speak? The floor is yours, Councillor. Uh, Lord Mayor, there are two, two matters I would like to speak about. Um, one is in relation to my attendance at the Local Government Association of South Australia's ordinary general meeting last Thursday and Friday. Um, Adelaide City Council put up four motions um, to the uh, general meeting and I'm very pleased to report back for the first time ever um, with the assistance of the CEO, um, 
that we managed to get um, support for all of our motions. And I'll just briefly mention those motions. Um, the first which the CEO spoke to was that um, the LGA explore local, national, international business models used by the local government sector to manage commercial operations and explore any current legislative barriers or opportunities that would enable greater innovation and investment in commercial activities in order to offset the cost of council services for the community. Uh, and the CEO spoke to that, and that was a very hot, hotly debated one. However, uh, when it came to the vote, uh, it, it, there was a majority of support for that. Uh, another motion that Adelaide Council put to the meeting was uh, that the um, LGA work with the Australian Local Government Association, the federal and state governments and local universities to establish a national centre for local government innovation, research and development in Adelaide. And there was overwhelming support for that. Uh, there another motion was in relation to the development of a certified carbon offsets industry in South Australia. Um, and our original motion was amended slightly to be more general. However, uh, in the end, we incorporated the LGA's recommended general motion, but included our motion uh, specifically about um, a carbon abatement and biosequestration projects that generate certified carbon offsets and deliver multiple benefits for local communities in South Australia was included in that motion. And finally, um, <coughs> the fourth motion was that the LGA to advocate to the Government of South Australia to establish a climate change adaption fund to support local government to deliver regional adaption initiatives, noting the particular impacts of climate change on coastal regions and natural waterways and water resources. And that uh, also received considerable support from the meeting. And I have to say that a lot of the regional councils were very interested in, in these motions and how they would assist them uh, in, their, uh, in their work. Um, so Lord Mayor, for the first time ever, all of our motions actually were endorsed by the meeting. I did, uh, however, uh, speak against a motion uh, in relation to uh, Prospect Council that was put forward and that related to the deregulation of liquor licensing public campaign. Uh, there's been overwhelming support um, by the LGA to extend the uh, small venue licences beyond the CBD. Uh, and, um, I did stand and I did speak against the motion um, and uh, unfortunately I was uh, one of, I think, a minority of five out of uh, a few hundred people who uh, did not support that motion. So there is, there is pressure building from a lot of the other uh, councils, Metropolitan in particular, uh, being spearheaded by the prospect to extend the small venue licences to the metropolitan and regional areas. So we'll definitely hear more about that later uh, as the LGA pursues uh, the wishes of the general meeting. Um, Lord Mayor, I also have another a matter to report on and that relates to um, some awards that uh, Adelaide City Council received at the Local Government Professional Australia South Australia Leadership Excellence Award is held, held recently and they're um, to recognise outstanding achievement and innovation in local government. They not only recognise excellent but also uh, contribute to the advancement and improvement of local government as a sector. So on behalf of the Council I'd like to congratulate all those involved in receiving these awards and Lord Mayor, um, I'd like to present them to you. There are three beautiful awards sitting here, uh, and I'll just hold up one. Um, this one is for the Management Challenge, and uh, for which we received an award. And indeed, Lord Mayor, um, 
we have, I'd like to acknowledge the work of our um, team who won um, the challenge and will now be representing South Australia in May at the National Local Government Challenge event. Um, and all the team uh, will be presenting to the committee on the 9th of May uh, and we'll get to see their pre-challenge video and certainly we look forward to seeing that. But I'd just like to acknowledge Catherine Harris, Lauren Schleves, Paul Harefield, Kate Eichner, Leandro Lopez Dion and Lock Chu, who were our, uh, the people selected from our administration uh, to form a team uh, to compete uh, with teams across the state. And I know from previous years and also my work in uh, at a at a local council, how hotly contested these, this particular award is. Uh, so it's just fantastic news that, uh, that our team uh, from Adelaide City Council has won that award and will represent um, the State of South Australia in the national awards. Um, Lord Mayor, there are two other awards. Um, the Community Partnership and Collaboration Award. And this was won for the, uh, by Adelaide City Council for the Brown Hill Keswick Creek Stormwater Project Steering Group Project. The award was presented to the cities of Adelaide, Burnside, Mitcham, Unley and West Torrens in recogni recognition of the delivery of a major complex cross-boundary project involving multiple stakeholders. The five catchment councils shared a common goal of achieving an effective stormwater management plan agreed by all councils and consulted extensively within their local communities. Through a number of common information briefings and resolutions, the project was taken forward in a coordinated and collaborative manner through the five councils, resulting in an adopted stormwater management plan as well as most a very importantly state government funding for that project. Lord Mayor, the third award is the Welcome for the Welcome China um, project. The City of Adelaide's Welcome China project was developed to maximise the tourism and economic benefits uh, to the city from the new direct China Southern Airline flights. Um, and by the time the first flight landed here in Adelaide, Chinese visitors could use WeChat, which is their favourite digital platform, to find out what to see and do and where to shop and eat in Adelaide. They also received a Chinese visitor map featuring eight key city attractions. There was also welcome signage located in taxis, buses, information centres, shops, restaurants and at various points around the city. And prior uh, to the arrival, city businesses were also supported with advice on how they could maximise the opportunities created by the increase in the number of Chinese visitors. Winning this award truly reflected the collaborative efforts of staff within council and their work also with the state government. So Lord Mayor, um, I very happily present these uh, awards to you. Um, on behalf. Thank you, Councillor Clare. Now, members, I've uh, enabled uh, Councillor Clare to have a little more latitude in terms of time. I'm going to come down and collect those awards from our councillor, but we've got team members from administration here who have specifically joined us tonight who were the award winners. So, members, please show your appreciation. Well done, team. <laughs> and, uh, Councillor Clarehan, extremely well done at the LGA. You did us proud. Um, members, do I have any other members who'd like to talk to their activities over the last period uh, with regards to member activities? Councillor Abia. Um, just to put on note, uh, Lord Mayor, I'll be reporting back on the Middle Eastern uh, delegation trip to Council, um, finalising that aspect of the report uh, with the administration at the moment to present hopefully at the next Council meeting or the one after that. Thank you, Councillor Abia. Members, any further? Otherwise, I'll have someone please move to adopt. Councillor Martin moved, seconded by Councillor Corbell. Those in favour? Carried. Thank you, members. Well done. Uh, members, uh, the next item is the reports to Council from the CEO. <coughs> Uh, which is item 12.1 is the first one, optimising the customer centre's operating hours. There's a recommendation for papers on page 10. Do I have a mover, members? 
Moved by Councillor Vershaw, seconded by Councillor Moran. Councillor Vershaw, do you wish to speak to the item? Councillor Moran. Members, any queries, questions or debate regarding the item? Councillor Vershaw, Councillor Wilkinson. Um, I read in the report that, the, um, that there hadn't been any complaint with the trial of reducing um, the uh, hours of operation from 5.30 close to 5 o'clock. And I, I just, I find it amazing that, that we've not actually had any adverse response to that because most people who are office workers in the city finish work at five o'clock. By the time they get to the council office, it would then be closed. So that, that enabled people to go to um, uh, um, uh, uh, to do their business at the council offices there uh, after they finish work. Maybe the trend is that people are going during their lunch break, and that's why it's it's working. But I've just have reserved the right to revisit it if we find we do get people once we permanently go to a five o'clock close to sort of review that and consider going back to 5.30 if, if we do get adverse um, reaction to it. So, But based on what's written in the report that we've not got adverse reactions so far, um, um, based on that report, I'm happy to support it at this this point. Well cool spoken, Councillor. Members, any further debate? I'll hand you back to Councillor Vershaw to sum up. Members, those in favour? Those against? We will carry that item. Thank you. Uh, members, we go to 12.2, uh, which is an easement for electrical supply uh, along Bartels Road. We have a recommendation before us. Do I have a mover? Councillor Moran, seconded by Councillor Rook. I'll need it to, uh, we've got a mover. Thank you. So Councillor Moran, you'd like to speak to it? Um, just to remind you, it has um, gone to Atla and was um, passed there. Thank you. And Councillor Corbell, you seconded. Would you like to speak to the matter now? Um, just a question that was raised to Atla, which the administration might have an update on. It was about the rationale as to why Bartels Road was chosen. Councillor Moran actually asked this. Can I refer that to our acting CEO, please? Um, I actually don't have that available at the moment, Councillor. I'll take that on notice. Let me check with that, Councillor. So now I'll throw it into the floor. Sorry, I won't throw it to the floor. I will invite the floor for the debate. Uh, Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, yes, I was at the APLA meeting as well, and part of this proposal to underground the power lines, and though we felt there were other other streets like Jeffcott Street where, where power line undergrounding is a higher priority, but if the PLEC um, funding is already in place to do this, then we were agreeable to it. Um, but what goes hand in hand with power line undergrounding is, is new street lighting. And what we don't want to see happen is a repeat of the mistake that was made in Wakefield Road. And anyone that's been a car driving up Wakefield Road will experience the dazzling, glary white street lights. Um, and so my amendment is basically intended to avoid that, that we um, uh, because I understand the lighting is going to be done by... Well, Councillor, if I can assist you, could yeah. you help us with the wording of yeah, your yeah. proposed amendment? I'll seek a seconder, then you sure. can talk to it. So but they say power networks, I understand, are going to do the lighting. So I'm uh, adding a proviso to the easement that the words, uh, first paragraph after 2017, the words, and I have emailed this to committee, uh, uh, on the proviso that the street lighting is warm no more than 2700k and not glary by avoidance of exposed lamps that's to avoid basically what we've had happen in Wakefield Road which has been a disaster mm. okay now councillor that's appearing on the screen in front of you could you help the administration please make sure the wording is accurate Street lighting is warm. Going back to the beginning of the amendment, on the proviso that 
the street lighting is warm. Comma. No more. Councillor Wilkinson, can I just interrupt you and I apologise. I've just taken advice from our acting CEO. Um, this matter is regarding the granting of an easement. Yes. However, should you wish to uh, have a say with regards to the lighting used, um, we might decouple the matters. Can I encourage I'm you to... I'm deliberately coupling them okay. as a leverage. Um, can I have our acting exercise. CEO just yeah. comment on this? Because yeah. you can do it during other business. That's what I'm suggesting. Acting CEO. Through you, Lord Mayor. Um, Councillor, my understanding in relation to this process is whilst we've been requested to grant an easement, they are in a position under the relevant legislation in relation to this to actually progress to, display, to place the infrastructure on site anyway. So I'm not confident in relation to how well this will actually couple to the extent that you're looking um, to achieve. I don't know if that will actually have the relevant outcome that you're looking for. Um, but what I was proposing through the presiding member was to actually either take on notice or take another resolution in relation to us coming back to you with the proposed PLEC rollout and the project itself and then take it from there in relation to how we would handle um, ensuring council's objectives are met. Yeah, so my concern about that is that once it's decoupled, we don't have any leverage over um, the um, SA Power Networks to get them to do the light in the way that we'd like them to do it. If I can assist you, Councillor, mm. I think also what the acting CEO is suggesting that in the, well, we don't know, I can't preempt the debate, but is that in the unlikely event that this matter failed, uh, we don't want to frustrate the ability to grant the easement. So that is the risk of coupling the matters together. So the, if it was done separately through a motion on notice through other business or a motion without notice in other business, it could be contemplated as a separate item and it wouldn't frustrate the granting of the easement. Well, this is an amendment. So if the amendment fails, then it just goes back to the, uh, to the as recommended. But, but my advice to other members is that we are leverage in the dealings with this power networks is at the time that they are asking of us to grant the easement which they require. Once we've given them that permission for that, we no longer have any... Uh... All right. Councillor? I'll, I'll allow you to proceed. So let's let's get that wording right. We'll seek a seconder. We'll have the debate on the proposed amendment. On the proviso that the street lighting is warm, no more than 2,700k. 2,700 <laughs> and not glary <laughs> by avoidance <laughs> of exposed lamps. Okay, thank you, Council. We've got a proposed amendment for us. I had Councillor Antics up first. Was that a question or was that a seconding? Uh, it's, it's, it's a suggestion. I think point seven deals with this in the, in the papers that um, section twenty eight of the Crown Land Management Act allows the minister to make that. I wonder whether the mover might um, suggest it as a uh, as a request. Uh, rather than a uh, as a suggestion, um, and then and then we could also, as part of this motion, and then you could also move a separate motion if you want. I'll look to the mover. Mover, do you take comfort in what your fellow councillor is suggesting? I'm going to agree. I agree. Uh, what wording would uh, councillor Ant suggest on the basis that the street lighting, or on the understanding? On the suggestion, or you just need to change the word proviso to the word to the word suggestion. On the, I mean, it would be open for uh, councillor with the suggestion. suggestion. To move another so motion. Change on the proviso to yeah. with the suggestion. Yeah, great. Yes. I'm happy to incorporate that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy to... There seems to be consensus in the room, Councillor. Are you happy to proceed on that yep. basis? And I'll, so if we change the wording, we ask the Secretariat to do that, and I'll now seek a seconder. Excuse me, I'll, I'll incorporate it in the original motion. I will deal, I'm going to deal with the amendment, Councillor. I, think. I incorporate it, you don't have an amendment. I'm the move, and I'm happy to incorporate that into the original motion. Let me seek comfort from the mover of the proposed amendment. Councillor Wilkinson, are you happy for Councillor Moran to move that? Yes, you are. Done. Thank you. So we'll just make that the original motion. We go back to the mover, who was Councillor Moran, second by Councillor Corbell. Any debate on the varied motion? Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Not debate, but really just a comment. 
Um, I think uh, if the administration could just take on notice, I think um, all of the elected members support Council Wilkinson and his objective here. Can we somehow find a way of just putting this to bed so that we don't have to address it every time we have a lighting issue, but that we just think it somehow we adopted this policy and it's done with? Just on notice. Thank you. Thank you. Members, any further? Councillor Corbell, you second. Do you wish to speak to it? No, Councillor Moran, back to you, to oh, Councillor no, Clarehan. Yes, of course you can. Um, the report says that Council will pay for new lighting. Is that correct and has it been budgeted for? I'm sure that's Given that right. they're taking the infrastructure and putting it underground, um, is, could I have a comment please, what it's costing us? Acting CEO. I don't have the answer with this at the moment, Councillor. I'll take that on notice. Members, any further debate? Councillor Moran, to sum up? Uh, yes, just to sum up, um, thank Councillor Wilkinson. Um, we, he certainly has uh, made his views clear and I think we all agree with them. And I think Councillor Henders' uh, suggestion that we just have that as policy so we don't have to, so Sandy doesn't have to um, say it every time. Um, obviously, we ha I think in this case we haven't got much bargaining power. If we foil them and say you have to do this and that, they will just do it themselves or the scary thing is they might just say, well, if you don't want us to underground, we'll take it somewhere else out of your council area. But um, I think to give a good suggestion uh, and advice like that is to their benefit as well and that's what I think we should do in all these cases rather than um, tub thump. Um, we're sensible, we know our city and we know what the failures of some of the government infrastructure has been. So um, I welcome this addition to the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Moran. So I put a varied motion uh, before you for your vote. Those in favour? Those against? So members, we carry item 12.2. Thank you for your debate, members. I'll take you straight on to item 12.3, where you have a recommendation to approve and note. Acting CEO, I may ask uh, one of your directors to briefly preamble this matter before I then seek a mover uh, from the council. Deputy Lord Mayor, I understand that you would like to? If I may, I'd just like to declare an, an interest but um, I indicate that I'm going to stay in the room because I don't believe I have a conflict of interest. I have an interest because I sit on the board of the Adelaide Central Market Authority. But um, this is a matter that's been discussed at the market board meetings as well, so I'm not going to do it. Thank you for making that declaration, Deputy Lord Mayor. Acting CEO? Um, Justin Collins? Uh, thank you, and through the Chair. Um, just given the significance of this item, I just wanted to take the opportunity to confirm with councillors that um, we've been through an extensive consultation process in relation to the community land revocation. Um, this is part of ongoing consultation in relation to the um, proposed redevelopment of the Central Markets Arcade. So we've consulted it, um, with the community in the past through the Our Market District um, um, discussions. Uh, we've consulted in relation to community land revocation at this time and we'll consult further with the community um, following the receipt of expressions of interest uh, in the future. Uh, this is a critical step of the process in terms of the future redevelopment of the site. Um, we need to submit the report to the Minister for who has the ultimate decision as to whether to revoke community land. Um, I think it's um, worthy to note that um, we'll, the, the Council was particularly sensitive given the iconic status of the Central Markets Arcade and the Central Markets proper um, to ensure that we had a very robust process. The report outlines that we went through extensive processes to um, obtain feedback and uh, the 60 responses that were received um, I think is reflective broadly of the general community support for the, um, the proposal. A um, number of the issues that were raised um, in um, through the feedback were anticipated by council. Um, they're not, they, they, so there wasn't too many surprises. And the report goes to uh, some lengths to provide councillors with uh, council with um, some confidence that um, all of the matters that have been raised um, will be appropriately responded to and will be considered as part of the next steps going forward in terms of the 
um, the application of the guiding principles that Council has adopted in relation to any future development. So um, on balance, we um, it's an important um, decision tonight to proceed um, with the submission of the report to councillors and happy to, uh, to the Minister and happy to respond to any questions. Thank you, Justin. Appreciate it. Uh, can I look to the floor, Councillor Mayan? You would like to move? I'm happy to move as printed. Thank you, Councillor. Seconded by Councillor Martin. Uh, Councillor Mayan, would you wish to speak to it? Well, obviously, this is the first step in proceeding down the redevelopment path, which I think we've unanimously supported. Um, naturally, there will be um, people that um, would like for things for things to stay the same, and that's reflected in the consultation. But um, I think for the, um, for the sake of this iconic um, market, that this site has to be developed and it has to, this um, declaration has to proceed. Councillor Martin. Um, yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. I too endorse the proposal, though uh, I do note that there's a warning in the public consultation process um, that Council needs to pay much more attention to the, uh, the messaging. Um, as some of the respondents noted, uh, there is a feeling abroad that uh, Council may be placing profit before public good. Um, now, I take that on board. Uh, I note also that the majority of those who took part, uh, which was a great surprise to me, by the way, a majority of those who took part, and particularly if you include the submission of the Southwest Residents Group and its membership, they opposed it. Uh, believing that it was not uh, the appropriate thing for Council to revoke the community land title. Now, that suggests to me the need for a, a cautious approach. But I, I am particularly uh, delighted to see included in the response and uh, reported in the newspaper today that the uh, Adelaide, Adelaide Symphony Orchestra supports the proposed development. And uh, I'm pleased also about the concept that's included for a, uh, a concert hall or a series of concert halls, either in the remodeled Sir Samuel Way building, uh, or perhaps and maybe ideally in the air above the central market. Um, it's the suggestion that the latter would make an ideal UNESCO music city centre. Um, and performers, including the ASO uh, from uh, the orchestra through to the Adelaide Youth Orchestra, and even visiting performers could use that space. I think that's that's quite exciting, not least also because there's a suggestion it would house the SA uh, Music Hall of Fame. Uh, a 1,500-seat auditorium is what they're suggesting, uh, and good on them, I say. It is a, a visionary statement, and I think it would sit perfectly within that environment because it would complement the redevelopment of the Majesty's Theatre, and it would provide uh, the nighttime economy that is lacking in the central market at this time. So I would ask the administration uh, to do as it suggests here, that it notes uh, the proposal from the ASO and that it carries it forward to the next phase of the project, uh, which is the tender or expression of interest in design process. So uh, yes, I do ask members to support it. I think it's a, a grand proposal. Members, to the floor. Councillor Wilkinson. Um, it's interesting that the, uh, the community response is somewhat liable. We've got equal numbers for and against, and then, and then a bunch of neutral ones. And I think um, it makes it all the more important and, and uh, that you know, there is this sentiment out there putting sort of profit above, above community interest. And I think the matters of you know, not, not unduly overshadowing all of the popular eateries on Guja Street you know, is something that the community are going to be looking at how, how that you know, manifests. And uh, some people might want things kept the same, but I'm sure nobody wants the ugly Coles facade to Guja Street and to Groat Street to stay the same. And I think the community would look well upon the council if, if the council sees the reinstatement of the Federation Hall on Grove Street that we're seeking to have put back in place of the coal supermarket. That the community would look kindly on the works of the council for actually um, doing some of the travesties of the 60s and uh, putting things right and actually making the area better through this community land revocation. So uh, I think it just uh, just points to the importance of getting and also the treatment, you know, to uh, 
to Guja Street and not having the built form looming looming large over the streets as is, as we've put in place um, are very important to ensure that the community ultimately gets a better um, central market environs um, than than it has now through this process. Thank you, Councillor. Members, Deputy Lord Mayor. Just very briefly, Lord Mayor. I just, I just wanted to add um, my support to this and, and just to point out again as reassurance to the, um, to the general public that none of the issues that were raised in the consultation um, are issues new to us. Um, and they're not the issues that I think preclude us from proceeding, but they are issues that um, give us a heads up to how we should proceed. They're all things we've already given some consideration to and um, I, and I guess I just want the community to be reassured that there are all issues that we will be taking full account of as we move forward. We, we also understand this is a precious asset and that it's much loved by the city. We're, we're not going to do anything to, to mess it up. Um, and, and we're grateful for the feedback that we've got, which accords, I think, pretty much with our own thinking about what, that, what should happen on that site. Any further debate for us? Before I hand you back to Councillor Moran to sum up, I'd just like to commend you on the guiding principles which we work together as a team to uh, put together to inform this project. I think a lot of the public consultation uh, will be well served by those guiding principles which we crafted together. I think it's very, very important. And I'd just like to also thank, um, of course, uh, former Associate Director Mike Phillip, but also Matt Rodder, um, because we did have a lot of meetings uh, with regards to Central Market Arcade Traders, the Central Market itself, uh, the Chinatown Group, the Great Street Traders, the Goodger Street Traders, the South West Community, um, to name a few uh, during the public consultation period. And we were out for public consultation, I understand, for a period which was twice as long as what was required by statute. Councillor Moran, to sum up. Sum up, Lord Mayor. Members, those in favour? Those against? We will carry that item. Thank you, members. Members, item 22.4, uh, my mistake, we're seeking a variation of an encroachment policy on page 210. Councillor Wilkinson is moving. Uh, I'd, like to move I'd like to move an alternate motion. You may do that, Councillor. Um, I'd like to move that Council does not agree to the waiving of the encroachment policy. And all of the other wording um, remain consistent. Having been down there looking at the uh, site and the fall across the site, um, the, um, uh, the, uh, the canopy is as much as five and a half metres above the footpath. Councillor, before you speak to it, I will, I will need a seconder. You have a seconder for the purposes of the debate with Councillor Martin. The floor is yours Thank for you. debate and alternate motion. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Um, uh, the, uh, there is a slope across the site, and what should happen on sloping sites is that the building should respond to the topography, and the canopy should cascade down here following the line of the footpath, not soaring above it. And the administration's comment in the body of the report is that they had an issue with the height of the canopy as it would not provide proper shelter. But the other important thing is that the prevailing floor height and canopy height of all the historic buildings in the area is at 3.7 metres. That's one of the reasons why our policy calls for it to be 3.7 metres, not allowing it to go up to 5 metres, which doesn't relate to uh, the, the, um, the reasons for um, uh, exceeding the, uh, the height limit, I don't think, are, are sound. And I think the canopy could and should easily be designed to follow the, uh, to follow the topography. And it's one of the few instances in Adelaide where you actually do get a sense of the topography falling towards the Torrens Valley at that term, <laughs> at that part of Frome Street, which the design is, does, is, doesn't, doesn't, um, doesn't play that out. So I, I think it could easily be redesigned. I understand as the State Government architect had called for a canopy over the footpath because the proposal proposed nothing, no protection of the footpath, so I commend the insertion of the canopy. Well, what's the point of having a canopy if it's five and a half metres high? We're talking the canopy higher than the ceiling. You know, the, the rain is blowing in, it's not going to provide any meaningful shelter for people. Um, and uh, so, and I don't think we should be undermining our, our policy on, the, on the, these sorts of things, uh, particularly if we're reviewing uh, our policies. 
Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Martin, you seconded. Would you wish to speak? Um, look, I'd like some uh, clarity from the administration, if I could. Um, uh, paragraphs 13 and 14 seem to make clear that the canopy meets the policy for most of the, uh, uh, the canopy itself, but that at the, uh, the northern end, it's 5.4 metres instead of 4.5, and that's what the administration is seeking to do. But Councillor Wilkinson is proposing 3.7. Is that is that correct? Oh, it's only little of it, is that three. Okay, the policy is 3.7. Okay, well I am thoroughly confused. Um, yes, that's yes. I understand that. Councillor so, Martin, would you wish some clarity from administration? Yes, I, I am confused. I'll refer that to our acting CEO. Chancellor. Through the Lord Mayor, um, the encroachments policy requires a maximum height of 3.7 metres. Uh, the proposed canopy uh, does not meet uh, in its entirety the intent of that policy uh, to the point where at the northern end of the proposed canopy it would be some 5.4 metres in height. The recommendation that you have before you is that Council supports the encroachment, uh, the variation of the encroachment policy in that it would be over 3.7, but, but that the maximum height at the northern end not be any greater than 4.5 metres. So in its entirety, it would not meet the intent of the encroachments policy insofar as height is concerned. Okay, so we're, uh, uh, the wriggle room is uh, 0.8 of a metre we're talking about. Okay, I understand. Uh, look, I, I'll endorse, um, uh, given his expertise in the area, I'll endorse uh, uh, Councillor Wilkinson's uh, proposal. Um, I do understand uh, that the uh, developer has been uh, less than cooperative in this process, and it is unfortunate uh, that we haven't been able to negotiate an outcome. Um, but I will support the, uh, the motion uh, as amended by Councillor Wilkinson. Members, we have Councillor Anne Moran followed by Councillor Alex Antic. Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, look, I, I won't support this. Um, I usually support Sandy because he is an expert in this. But the um, executive pump summary clearly says that um, application of the council's encroachment policy would result in a recommendation to refuse the proposed canopy. Now, I'll take any canopy I can. And this, while it doesn't in its entirety um, fit our policy, it's fairly it's, it's not too far off, and you can see the logic in it is the fall of the land, um, the canopy stayed at the same height and the land has dropped down. Um, I'm sure a good architect could fix that by changing it. But, but we're, not, we're not given the opportunity, um, we're not given let's have a lower one, we've got no leverage here at all. Um, and as we've been pointed out, the developer is is not has not been cooperative now. So if I was a developer, knowing that, my assessment would, if we say no to this, um, that we won't get a canopy at all. No, well, I, I don't understand, Sandy, why that isn't right. Because if I was a developer, and I'd said I've given you a canopy, this is for public use. It's to protect us from the rain and shine. I know it's not the best one, but I, I think if we end up with nothing then that's a bad outcome. And I'm not convinced that we wouldn't end up with nothing. So convince me. Councillor Antic. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Actually, um, uh, stood in for you, Lord Mayor, the opening of or the, uh, the commencement of this. I don't think that gives rise to a, the glass of champagne I had. I don't think that gives rise to a uh, conflict. I put it on the record, notwithstanding, and then refused to leave. <laughs> Only one, even half. Very sensible. Anyway, um, uh, notwithstanding that matter, Lord Mayor, I, I have to say I, we are in the process, I think, of uh, varying our encroachment policy, presumably. Presumably that variation may well give rise to a little more flexibility for these sorts of projects. This is a fairly substantial building we're talking about. This is something in the order of 134 metres tall, this building. So, um, you know, I get the point about the, the attention to detail, but really it would be almost ludicrous for it not to have a canopy in one of which people could uh, stand, stand holding their bikes and you know, um, you know, doing all the things that people do. Yeah, drinking champagne, correct. Um, so I, I, look, I think in this instance we have done this uh, on multiple occasions for similar developments. I'm certainly not suggesting that um, 
uh, that should be, uh, we should throw our uh, policy out. But it, I think this is a pretty unique scenario insofar as this is going to be a centrepiece building. It's going to um, add to the uh, to the area, it's going to add to the East End, it's going to add to the bars and et cetera, et cetera. It's going to bring a lot to this area. And I think we need to do what we can uh, in order to make the building as accessible as we can for people to use. And that will include in the middle of July, uh, an extra 0.8 of a metre will make all the difference. I, I agree with Councillor Brown. I think that there's a strong chance the development will say, all right, that's it. Uh, I won't bother there because it's not like it's not going to go ahead. So I think we, we need to be a bit flexible in this case. So I, I don't support the, um, the amendment. Uh, I support the original motion. Thank you. Now, members, you are, uh, we had a new motion uh, from the beginning. So this is what we're debating at the moment. We're not dealing with a formal amendment at this point in time. Uh, members, do I have any further debate from the floor? I don't, so I hand back to Councillor Wilkins and sum up. Um, I think some members are of the misconception that if we ask for Council's policy to be upheld, that then the response will be that there will be no canopy over the footpath. I'm currently dealing with a couple of developments uh, in other council areas with a state government architect with developers. And it's the state government architect, Vic Tridente, who has asked for the canopy to be added because it's missing. When the state government architect asks a developer in this sort of project to do it, they don't then say, oh, no, we're not going to do it. When, when They don't ask for much, but when they ask for something like they have here, they haven't asked for the tower to be set back or or any adjustments like that, all about is asked for the canopy. Um, the developer, it's not about to not do the canopy just because they have to follow council policy with respect to the height. So it's not um, uh, five and a half metres or nothing. It's it's basically um, a canopy that either follows council's policy or or doesn't. It's a misconception to think that um, we'll get nothing because because the state government architect has specifically asked for a canopy, which wasn't in the original proposal. That's all the reason why they will still do it. They'll just adjust the design of it to follow the topography of the street, which is what should be happening, and to respect the prevailing scale. And, and in terms of what Councillor Abbott asked, in terms of us reviewing the policy, altering that um, height is not something that we would be. I would see that we would be looking to change that aspect of the policy because the prevailing floor height through Adelaide is is 3.7 metres. You look down Rundle Street, the, the, the ceiling height in all of those buildings is 3.7 metres. That is the prevailing height. So you don't want to have a situation where you get new buildings of a fundamentally different scale to the prevailing historic character buildings throughout Adelaide. It just gets a skew effect um, of um, of new developments look, looking like they're 40% sort of inflated relative to our prevailing historic building. So, um, so I just try to give members some comfort that um, if we ask for the policy to be followed, then um, we're still going to get a canopy. It's just going to be an altered design. So, members, you have Council Wilkinson's alternate motion before you. Those in favour? Those against? Alternate motion fails. Members, I look to the floor. Deputy Lord Mayor. Second the members. Councillor Vershaw, do you wish to speak to as printed? Deputy Lord Mayor. No. Councillor Vershaw, members. Back to you, Deputy Lord Mayor. No. Those in favour? Those against? Members, sorry, can I see hands again very clearly? Those in favour? Those against? Carried. Thank you, members. Members, item 12.5 on your agenda, which is page 219, uh, Victoria Park Community Building. You have a recommendation before you, I understand, for option three. I look to the floor for a mover. No. Councillor Clarehan, seconded by Councillor Moran. Councillor Clarehan, do you wish to speak to the recommendation? Councillor Moran. Members to the floor, Councillor Martin. Look, I, I don't wish to debate the merits or otherwise. I, I think the option that's proposed is excellent. I, I just make the observation that this is yet another thing in which we are being told you cannot have this option, you cannot have that option because it's not supported by another outside body. 
Now, this is becoming a very frequent thing. The previous motion, last week or the week before, with the Mayfair Hotel, if you don't do this, then you're going to lose another development. I just find that the nature of these constant, uh, um, uh, well, I won't use the word threats, but these constant ultimatums um, it is just disconcerting. Uh, it's almost like you're being placed in a position where you're going to be held to ransom for not agreeing to something. Now, I repeat, I'm perfectly happy with option three and I'm not going to debate that, but it is disconcerting. Members, any further debate? Councillor Clarehan, summing up. This has been a long-awaited um, facility for this particular area of Victoria Park. Uh, and this will also, providing these facilities, will not only increase the amount of usage, but also improve the amenity, amenity greatly for those who already use the facility. And I do, I, I'm really pleased to know that there will be a lot of um, women who are involved in sport who will be able to use these facilities. I think we've had um, people who've not used the, uh, the sporting fields because of the inadequate facilities and this this will go this will be exactly what they've been asking for. I'm also would like to comment on the location. Um, this is a very centrally located facility and again available to all and I don't think we'll have any problems with any of the residents um, feeling like the buildings right on their doorstep, which was what's been previously proposed. This is a much better outcome. Thank you, Councillor Clarehan. Item 12.5, those in favour, members? Those against? Item carried. Thank you, members. Item 12.6, draft 2017-2018 integrated business plan for public consultation, page 232 of your papers. Uh, you have a recommendation to endorse, to authorise and to note. Do I have a mover? I have Councillor Moran. Do I have a seconder? Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Moran, the floor is yours. I recommend this for consultation. Obviously there are things that we'd like to adjust, but um, uh, it's not perfect yet. Um, but it's, it's good, it's a, be able to go out to consultation now to the public and we will adjust it after that. Thank you, Council Mayor. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I also um, want to commend this for, for get it out to the public so we can hear what our community has to say about it. Um, I do just want to um, make the point that when it comes back, I'm, I may well be um, seeking to, to um, move an amendment to increase the amount of funding for the UNESCO City of Music. I still believe that that's um, underdone, and so I just want to um, give a sort of advance notice to fellow members about that, and I'll approach them. Um, once I've got a clearer view on it. Um, but I don't think that, that um, those sort of considerations should slow us down. I think that um, it's important to get it out and, and hear what our community have to say and see what their priorities are. And I look forward very much to hearing, hearing from our community about what they have to say. Also wanted to thank the administration for the process this year. It's been um, in many, many ways a vast improvement on previous years. And um, uh, thank you. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Clarehan. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I'd also like to thank the administration um, for getting our um, business plan and budget ready for distribution for comment. Um, it's an enormous amount of work by the members and the administration, and I'm very happy for it to go out for consultation. I too, as Deputy Lord Mayor has flagged, um, would like to indicate my interest in, in perhaps uh, transferring money for the repair of Jeffcott Street um, from the Gateway projects um, to ensure that we do address major infrastructure work uh, that is failing us and has been failing us for some time. And uh, if I use the sort of analogy that uh, Councillor Moran often refers to, um, there's no point putting up, you know, chandeliers in a house that's being continually flooded on the ground floor. And that's how a lot of commentary is coming across in relation to our new, the money we've allocated for the Gateway Project. Um, to me, I think we need to fix up some pretty basic um, renovations and, and uh, address major failures in, in the actual structure 
um, of our of our home um, before we start worrying about the decoration. So um, I just wanted to flag that. And I do have a motion uh, on notice in relation to Jeffcott Street as well. Thank you, Councillor Clarehan. Councillor Wilkinson. Um, yes, I, I too just wanted to flag the same same intention in terms of that um, uh, um, one criticism of council is starting new projects before we've finished existing business. And uh, I've been on council for nearly ten years now, asking for Jeffcott Street to be um, to be uh, given some priority and done. And all that time, we've not all we've seen is, is some disabled access bus stops installed, but nothing to actually fix the uh, thing. And that is one of the important gateways to the city. We have a lot of cars driving down there and in the middle of winter you're getting flooding and it's quite, you know, the flooding goes halfway across the road at times. But it's beautiful original bluestone curb and water table. We should be showcasing it, not, not having it going to rack and ruin. And, uh, and I know the administration are now on side to, to, to doing that, but we need to get money in to, to, to uh, substantially commence that. So rather than start some new entry statement thing, which, um, you know, maybe some lighting, some significant gum trees that we've already got would be enough of an entry statement thing for the time being, rather than spending 3.1 million on entry statements when we really need to put some priorities in one of our major entrances to the city being Jeff Street. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Martin. Um, can I ask a question or two of the administration um, in reference to the budget line on page 286 titled Parklands Gateways? Um, the, uh, not the Brandenburg gates, uh, the Parklands uh, gateways, uh, and ask two questions. Is there a proposal or a series of proposals which have been created by the administration for a, a, a city entrance experience? Uh, and will we see them? When will we see them? Acting CEO, Tom McCready. Through you, Lord Mayor, yes, the administration has been working behind the scenes in regards to looking at gateways, which answers a number of council's uh, strategies. Uh, firstly, in regards to greening, uh, which we've looked at, and also in regards to the beautification of the city. Um, we're happy to come back to the council and uh, present a number of options in regards to that, noting that the gateways what we're trying to address is firstly uh, in uh, Sir Don Brabham Drive when you've got international visitors coming into the city, so it's the main gateway into the city, uh, so it's in keeping with that and looking around Main North Road and uh, Prospect Road coming into the city where you've got a large volume of traffic coming in. So it, it ticks a lot of boxes in regards to council strategic plan and also its greening plan and happy to come back with a concepts for council's consideration. Okay, and can I ask uh, how is the figure of $3.112 million arrived at? Is that the cost of all of the options or one of the options? Through you, Lord Murray, it's the cost of uh, all of the options. Um, so uh, effectively, if you were to take a, a rough calculation, 1.5 million or 1.55 million each. Um, what it is, is it's a project that will be designed and delivered within the 2017-18 financial period of council were to consider that and endorse it. Thank you. Look, on that uh, basis, Lord Mayor, I, I too have some reservations uh, about that uh, project and uh, I, I would certainly uh, support Councillor Wilkinson and uh, Councillor Clarehan who have been long-term advocates for uh, upgrading Jeffcott Street in anything that they put forward in respect of that. But uh, it, so far as the budget uh, is concerned, there are still some issues. Uh, I still believe that the spend for North Adelaide is substantially below what uh, has been reported. Uh, I can't work it out to be more than around 10%, but I, I would be happy to see the figures that suggest or prove that it's substantially more. There's also uh, uh, the matter, in my view, of um, uh, uh, the um, uh, proposal for uh, uh, the Parklands Roadway for SACA. That $830,000 seems to me to be a substantial grant from Council for the South Australian Cricket Association, um, which amounts to a bit of a gift horse. Uh, and I am sure that there are other uh, organisations, community and sporting organisations in the parklands 
who could do a great deal with just 10% of that, let alone, you know, almost a million dollars to sack it. And just finally, I, I, I do want to um, anticipate that uh, I want um, uh, to put forward when the budget returns to Council a proposal to increase funding for the homeless in the community development budget. Um, we as a Council have expressed concerns uh, amongst ourselves privately and also to the State Government about the level of homelessness in this city. Um, anywhere between 150 and 200 people every night within the City of Adelaide and I guarantee tonight within 500 metres of this Town Hall there are probably a dozen people sleeping rough and yet uh, our, our budget allocation uh, according to the guidance we've previously given to the administration will be increased by barely the rate of inflation uh, and I think that we as a council uh, ought to be seen to be doing more uh, and uh, at least 10 to 15 percent increase would be a minuscule imposition on the budget and yet as I understand it for the homeless organisations it would be a substantial fillip uh, and enable them to do all kinds of things that they're unable to do at the moment. Um, but look, they're, they're matters uh, for when the budget, budget uh, papers come back, and uh, I trust that we receive some healthy comment from uh, ratepayers. Members, without further hands, I give you back to Council Moran who moved the motion. Yes, I just, about mine, obviously, you don't need reminding, but this is for consultation purposes, so um, it's not 100% bedded down in any way. But um, for the first time that I can remember, the budget has been predicated on a, prefaced on a rate free, freeze the dollar. And I think that's a really positive step um, for this council to take. Um, the Gateway project has only come to council, council's attention because of the budget line for it in the oddly specific $3.1 million, I'd say, I wouldn't put too much more work into it if I was working for the administration. It's dead. Um, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, well done for thinking outside the square. Um, as Sue said, um, quite rightly, you don't build a swimming pool when your toilet doesn't work. And the Gateway Project is certainly a lovely project that could be done when nothing else has to be done. Um, the homeless, as mentioned, uh, be very careful that you don't fund things that state government should be funding because you could, they'll never take it back. Um, but I think this is a good budget. Um, I think the process was um, good. Uh, the one day wonder was a bit arduous. But I think when um, the administration, what I'd say this time, why it was better, not that the process was any better, but I think the trust between the councillors and, the and their administration is at a very high level and that makes the budget process very easy um, because there is that trust, even though there is the gateway project. But other than that, there's a high level of trust. Thank you. On that, on that note, members, I'll put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 12.6, Acting CEO, and I will now take you members on to item 12.7, the West Franklin Boundary Realignment to approve. Can I have a mover please, members? Councillor Clarehan, seconded by Councillor Moran. Councillor Clarehan, do you wish to speak to 12.7? No, not necessarily. Councillor Moran? No. Councillor Slami, you have a hand up. Do you wish to speak to the matter? Any debate? Councillor Clarehan? No, no, members to the floor, those in favour? Those against? We carry item 12.7. Members, item 12.8 is a uh, uh, 2017 Future Local Government National Summit. Members, I might look to you for a procedural motion if I could first, please. Thank you, Councillor Moran. A procedural motion seconded by Councillor Slama. So those all in favour? Those against? We will carry the procedural motion. I now look, members, for a nominee or nominees. Now, this is the one you mentioned. I'd like to nominate Councillor Vershaw. Councillor do you accept? Um, Lord Mayor, I actually have found out today that I'm not going to be in the country on those two days. <laughs> so I would be, as much as I was very interested in going, I'll be unable to attend. So, members, is there uh, Councillor Abia? I'll be in Sydney all day. 
I'd like to nominate Councillor Milani. Councillor Milani is not here to answer that question, Councillor Martin. So, members, I can't proceed unless I have a nomination, or we can lay this matter on the table for two weeks. Okay. Members of, sorry. Okay, members, I've been advised that we can just proceed without a decision on this matter and we'll move on to the next agenda item. Should you wish to bring this to the next council meeting, uh, we can we can do so. Are you happy with that, members? Because I don't have many calls for nominations in front of me. So we will do so, so we'll move along. Thank you for that debate, members. Thank you. We will go, members, now to item 4.9, which does have a recommendation in the National General, General Assembly of ALGA, Canberra, 18 to 21st of June, page 317 of your papers. I will find that out. I don't know if there's a pecuniary interest. Okay, yeah, yes, it would be better off if you did. Okay. Would you just like to state the reason, please, Council? Um, Lord Mayor, um, I will have a conflict because um, it means that my fares and accommodation would be paid for if um, members choose to support me in attending the National General Assembly. Thank you, and as it sits, you are the subject of the recommendation. So well said, Councillor Clarehan, thank you. Councillor Corbell, do you wish to move this printed? Do we have a seconder? Councillor Vershaw. Councillor Vershaw. Uh, Councillor Corbell, would you wish to speak to it? Councillor Vershaw. Members, any debate? I put it before you. Those in favour? Those against? If we could please bring back Councillor Clarehan. Thank you, Ed. Carry that. Welcome back, Councillor. Members, item 12.10, appointment of a Traders Advisory Group Chair to the Adelaide Central Market Authority Board. You have a recommendation for you to approve. Moved by Councillor Wilkinson, sec seconded by Councillor Abiyan. Um, Councillor Wilkinson, Councillor Deputy Lord Mayor. Can I just um, note my interest, um, because I sit on the board of the uh, authority, again, not a conflict of interest, because this is an issue that's been discussed at the board. Certainly, Deputy Lord Mayor, thank you for bringing that to the attention of your fellow members. Councillor Wilkinson, you moved. Uh, yeah, happy to see Bill Zahara going with that. No, 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 that's not sure what papers you're reading, oh, Councillor. Right. That's Bill Howell. Oh, right. He's not. He's not eligible because he's not the chair. Is oh, okay. Well, yeah. This is free. <laughs> <laughs> so, Councillor, so your fellow members are clear. You are supporting the recommendations printed. You are, Councillor Aviard. Do you second any of you wish to speak to it? Good. <laughs> members to the floor. A man, a few words. Members to the floor. Any debate? Councillor Anti, you wish to speak to it? Certainly, Councillor Wilkinson, you're summing up. Oh, Councillor, are you asking a question, Councillor Moran? No, no. Okay, <laughs> Councillor Wilkinson, summing up. Summed up, members, now we vote. Those in favour? Those against? Thank you. 12.10 carried and appreciated. Members, progress of motions, uh, you have a recommendation for you to note. 12.11, those in favour? Oh, sorry, can I have a move, please? Councillor Corbell. Seconded by Councillor Antic. Any debate? Councillor Wilkinson? Um, just on this um, this agenda item, my understanding of what the purpose of this agenda item was, was to keep track of where where things gone, such as my motion in 2009 to light the cathedral as you drive down O'Connell Street, for example, to see how that's tracking. That was my intention of this, not, not just to see a percentage of motions that have gone through, which is relatively um, 
unhelpful as an election member. You're trying to see progress on, on motions that you put through. So just um, sort of state that for the record that that's really what our, my, my intention was in terms of this part of the agenda, not just to get a percentage figure. Councillor Wilkinson, can I refer that to our acting CEO to make an answer to that question? <coughs> Colleague Burns? Through the presiding member, so the intent of this report is to report on those decisions from this particular council term. Um, but with respect to those decisions that may not have yet been closed out from previous council terms, we're currently uh, preparing a report on that at the moment uh, to bring back before the council. Now, Councillor Moran. Thanks, Councillor Wilson. I just didn't understand that answer because it was um, standing my motion that brought this in because we were finding that um, motions from previous terms and for, from, were getting lost. For instance, my mini motions to pull down the conservatories and drill gardens. That's the sort of thing we need to track because council works at such a glacial pace that often you forget what you've moved. And this was, and this isn't at all what we meant. And we have had reports on um, how, how councils, councillors' motions are going. And this is, and I have very little interest in 24% get through 18, though that, that administration might have want to track that. But this is absolutely, Sandy's completely right, this is absolutely not what we meant. And if you go back to last year or last term's report on progress of council um, uh, motions, you'll see how, how it was supposed to be done. Um, the secretariat will give it to you in a day. You just ring up and say, can you give me the last five years of my motions and the ones that haven't progressed? Um, so that information is all there. I don't know where this came from, but it's a re really relatively recent mistake. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Avia? Uh, well, Mayor, we, we moved this motion earlier on, but there was also another motion that was moved, I think, a couple of weeks ago. But it wasn't possible for every council meeting that those progress motions would have come up. So there was a change uh, or a rescission to a motion, if someone could remind me, in regards to the progress report. But there was also a discussion um, in relation to digitising this process where elected members can go online at any time and be able to see what motions are there. Um, so that was another discussion that we had, uh, I think, as a result also. Of that. Is that correct? Did you have that was there a rescission? There was something that we did. Through still. the presiding member, at a recent council meeting, there was a rescission motion. This yes. report used to be presented to every council meeting, so the rescission motion changed the frequency of it from a fortnight to every month, but it was still limited to the current council term. We are planning a report to come into council with all decisions that are still open, but I don't have a date for you when that will be mm. um, brought to council tonight. Because I, I moved this motion and then we had a chat about digitising this process and we made any progress on the ability to be able to have council members view their motions online. Because also the public can view our motions online at the same time if they wish. Take it on notice. Um, I'll take on notice in relation to the progress of the um, digitisation or electronic. That we, I know that we have actually developed a um, pilot of a dashboard in relation to elected member motions. It's a matter of I'm um, not quite sure what state of or how ready that is for release at the moment. So I'll take on notice, but there has been a prototype or pilot developed. All right. Thank you. Acting CEO, I might ask a question if I can. I'll hand back to Councillor Corbell who moved. But point five of the RECO says. Uh, as of 18th of April 2017, a total of 56 or 27 percent of motions on or without notice remain open. The current progress of these motions on or without notice can be found here on the link, which they are. Are they specifically pertaining to this term of council? It is. Thank you. Okay, members, I hand you back to the mover, who is Councillor Corbell. Thank you. Yeah, um, interesting that we've had a discussion on this because generally it's just overlooked. Um, and we don't want to pull it out and discuss it. Um, just to summarise, I'm interested as well in having it set up so that it's by councillors, by elected members, so that you can go on and see. Sort by. Yeah, have it sorted so that you can see it, who's moved what and at what progress it's up to. Um, and also, I'm interested in the previous councils 
and what motion, because there's been references before, but in particular from Councillor Emma Rand, who said, um, reference, Sandy Wilkinson references to previous terms of councils, motions that they've moved that haven't actually had any progress on. And I am unsure of the process as to how, as a, as a newer budget member, we would find out about that. Um, so it should very, it should really be a, a seamless process, and it should be accessible to us as elected members. And I think it would be good for it to be accessible by the public as well. Thank you, Councillor. You have a report to note. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. So item twelve point eleven is carried. Uh, emerging key risks, nil. So we move on to item 13 and your agenda papers, members, which is questions on notice of which we have nil registered. So I'll take you on to questions without notice. Members, do I have any questions without notice? I don't. So I'll take you straight on to motions on notice, item 15.1. You have a motion on notice from Councillor Martin, page 326 regarding UPARC. Councillor Martin, the floor is yours, and I think you have a seconder in the form of Councillor Antic already. Oh, excellent. You Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, the, uh, the motion is on notice, so I won't, uh, I won't repeat it. But uh, this proposal uh, for which I and businesses in, in the city, in uh, Rundle Street and surrounds, seek your support is about future-proofing the area. Is this the point of what Councillor Antic. Oh, sorry. Yep. yep. Um, uh, we all know that in the coming weeks there's going to be a, a transition of patients, visitors and staff from the existing Royal Adelaide Hospital to the new RA. This will translate to thousands of staff uh, transitioning from one side of the city to the other side. And the impact we know from our own survey will be an average decline in trade of around 15% for our business rate payers in the East End. And uh, for some, for example, hospitality, it might be even higher. Now, additionally, the state government is about to start work in the same area on the North Terrace tram extension to be followed closely by the beginning of an upgrade of Gawler Place North. These three projects, no matter how positive they are ultimately for the city, these three projects could ultimately potentially lead to a significant disruption for our businesses for some time, not just in the vicinity of Rundle Mall, but all around the, uh, the city. And at the same time, our Rundle Street U Park is underperforming uh, compared to others in our car parking portfolio. Its occupancy is not the highest, and it also faces the stiffest competition. The car park over the road continues to offer free parking for one hour if you buy something from the Target store. So if you buy a Freddo Frog, you get a free hour's parking. That's stiff competition. Now, uh, if you approve the proposal that's uh, before you tonight, uh, you will be putting the U Park in Rundle Street on a much more competitive footing. And our city ratepayers also will be placed on a footing where they are able to compete effectively with competitors uh, who are not facing the same kinds of disruption. Now, it is just one measure, one measure, and uh, I understand your surprise because it is a, a big measure. Um, it is sending a clear signal that we are proactive and pro-city business. Now, the administration, I know, is suggesting uh, that the impact of the proposal on revenue will be about $200,000. Uh, I acknowledge that's no small amount. But I ask you to consider it in a different light, um, a much more positive light. And I, I relate the story of a businessman, one of several who understood this matter to be coming up tonight and rang me today. And uh, when I suggested that there's going to be an expense uh, his response was, it's not an expense, it's an investment. I need you to cease talking or, seek, or seek more time. You're going to cease talking. Thank you, Councillor Martin. So your seconder was Councillor Antic. Councillor Antic, the floor is yours. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Just to echo um, those comments, this is a unique period, I suppose, for the East End. We've got a, um, a, a continual challenge um, attracting customers and businesses done it twice now uh, to the uh, city um, as, as it stands. Um, 
we've got uh, yeah, we've got the, the continuing competition from suburban shopping centres and all, all of those sorts of things which are um, ongoing. But this really is a unique uh, time. It's a transitional time, I guess, for that part of the world. So. Um, uh, Councillor Martin's motion, I think, is uh, is a very reasonable one in the circumstances. At least gives the opportunity to uh, to explore this for a trial uh, period, and um, it's a small price, I think, in the grand scheme of things. And I like the analogy about it being an investment. We uh, uh, we tend to um, spend a lot of money on a lot of different uh, items around the town and around this, that, and the other. And this is one where I think we can show a bit of good faith, as much as anything, to our traders that we're actually in there uh, trying to do something uh, proactive. So. Uh, I, I've been, uh, I commend the, um, Councillor Martin for his thoughts, and I think um, this is really uh, an opportunity for us to um, to show that we're uh, we're on their side and we're looking out for them, and we're trying to trying to help them through this period. And at least, um, if this uh, short period of time between the, the switch between the hospitals can be um, flattened out, but from their point of view, we'll have done something to uh, something else to help. So I, I ask people to support it. Thank you, Councillor Antic. I've got Councillor Wilkinson followed by Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Wilkinson. Um, yeah, the, the East End lost out when uh, the um, Grand Central Hotel, which was Cox Foy's on that corner, was demolished by council to provide parking for, uh, for the London Mall traders, but it was made into a mall. That was a terrible mistake that happened then. But we need to remember why council got into building car parks and it was to give the city a commercial advantage to stop the donut effect with our main competitors being the big suburban shopping malls outside the city. So initiatives like this to uh, encourage people to come and shop in the city is the reason why the council owns U parks. We need to keep sight of, of that. So I'm very supportive of this, uh, this measure. And the experience at the central market was whilst in the first year there was a cost negative because of further increased patronage, people getting in the habit of using the car park, then the following year then it was cost neutral. So, you know, I think the hope here is to get people in the habit of using that car park um, and it's a good one to use. If you've gone and used it, if this is a good thing that tempts people to try it for the first time, they'll find it's actually a very convenient car park to use and they'll, they'll tend to like using it if they're given the inducement to, to give it a try. And that's what we're trying to do. And, and I think the circumstances of moving the Royal Labour Hospital are timely to also just give a bit of a leg up to those businesses, businesses in the East End. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Deputy Lord Mayor. Well, Mayor, I'd like to move an amendment that this matter be deferred to the first meeting of June, first meeting in June 2017. Um, and seek a seconder. Okay. You have a seconder with Councillor Moran. Had hand up first. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I've got some sympathy with uh, what Councillor Martin proposes, um, but I do um, feel the need to have um, considerably more information before I make what I consider a prudent decision of the impacts on that financial um, viability of um, the city and or the financial viability of this, um, well, on the finance of the city, let me put it that way, it's probably a better way because it's not going to affect viability, but it is going to affect finances. So there's a few things I'd like to say about that. First of all, I, I'm no expert in car parking, um, and I don't think Councillor Martin professes to be an expert in car parking, but we have in our report an indication that the, the council has undertaken, um, a con a con no, has employed a consultant who is a consultant in car parking, who is, as I understand it, the consultant in, consultant in car parking, who is um, looking at all of our car parking businesses and we're going to provide a report to us by the end of May. Um, what I'm suggesting is we defer this matter until early June, given that there's no, uh, the suggestion is not that we take any action until uh, operative until the 1st of July. So that gives us a chance to actually get the expert advice from the expert and then have a look at this and, and see whether it stacks up and we'll, it won't cause any delay because we'll be in a position as of the 1st of, as of, the 1st of July to make a decision to proceed or not. There are um, two other bits of information I think that as councillors, if we're going to make a prudent decision, we need to fully understand. This has been trialled at the central market and um, while it has been very successful in terms of bringing in extra um, trade, uh, extra um, customers, which was the point of the exercise for us at the market, it has been at a cost, and I think the council does need to understand that, and it hasn't reverted to previous um, figures, um, re revenue uh, levels, um, as Councillor Wilkinson has indicated, that's just not right. It is a cost at the market that we 
are willing to bear because it, we get direct benefit to our traders on the, on the floor and we can see that by a very considerable number of uh, increased uh, visits, 150,000 increased visits in a year, so it does impact. But you want to be dead sure that you're getting the impact that you want. And I think we need to better understand that we don't have the papers about that. We haven't, you know, there's nothing before us that's giving us, in a formal sense, that information. I'm giving what I know, you know. And, but I think we need to, um, uh, our administration to address, to address that. And I also think we do need to do a bit of modelling about this particular car park so that we understand who uses it and for how long. And if we knock off the uh, tariff for the first hour, is that what all the customers, current customers, or is it half the current? You know, we need to have a better understanding of what the tariff, what the tariff users are, and what knocking off the cost of the first, um, the first hour would do. So all I'm asking for is a deferral. I think is to bring back some further information and some expertise and some uh, learnings from previous experience, so that we can review Councillor what what Councillor Martin's suggestion, which may well be a very, very sensible one, but we can review it in the light of the full facts, in readiness for a change or no change as of the 1st of July. So it won't slow us down. Members, you have a proposal to, um, to amend and defer until the 1st of June. You've got a seconder in Council Moran. Yes, um, I, I think, think uh, I was going to vote against it, um, but I'm happy to um, to defer it for more details. I mean, this is not an appropriate motion for um, a ward councillor and another ward to put up with uh, no backing at all. I'm not an expert, Phil's not an expert, none of us are. The report from the council administration did seem very strongly against it. We have walked down this path before, as Megan said, at the central market. Uh, Councillor Henderson said that the central market was done to, um, for different reasons and the cost was borne. Um, Councillor Abiad um, moved that we do that when the Throne Road car park. It was, and he um, uh, championed that strongly. It was an, a, a spectacular failure. Um, one hour free parking does not, um, sorry. <laughs> He admitted it was a spectacular. It was done with good faith. We all supported you in some, but it was outstandingly unsuccessful. Um, so we have done that. I, I totally agree. We need to get this car park working. We need to get um, people staying at the East End, and we need to use effective practices that we have both expert um, advice and also. Um, uh, we, when we've seen it fail time and time again, not to keep repeat, repeating the mistakes of the past. Um, it's not free across the road. You have to go into um, Target and buy something. Um, that's, that's not free parking. Um, it's very hard to give free parking for a year and then take it away at the end of it, so that has to be considered. Um, you could make it cheaper, but I, I don't think anybody here has the expertise. What we've got to say to our um, administration, we want this car park to be used. We want to keep people coming to the East End after the hospital's left. I don't, I'm always a bit nervous when somebody just, and I've done it myself, just said, oh, I think this is the right thing. I mean, it might pass the pub, pub test, but it's, 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 not, it's not soundly based on anything when you have your administration so strongly opposing it. So I think we need the time to um, speak with the um, speak with the administration, find out what other things we can do, but not this one. And, and our car parks weren't to stop the donut effect. Our car parks were made solely to raise money. So I think we should remember that this is foregone income uh, that we should not forego lightly, and especially without the backing of the experts in that field. Thank you, Councillor Mann. So we're debating an amendment. I have Councillor Abiyad, followed by Councillor Corbell, followed by Councillor Martin, followed by Councillor Vershaw, followed by Councillor Slama. Lord Mayor, Councillor Mayor. thank you very much. In the uh, first, first term of uh, me being elected to Council, this is one thing that I did focus on heavily. I believe at the time, yourself, you were a uh, General Manager of Rondell Mall, uh, and you were involved in Rondell Mall, and you were aware of one of the initiatives that took place. I've driven Mark absolutely crazy, I reckon, over a 12-month period of researching every single car park. His last name wasn't great. Oh, he had more errors there just as much as I did. And it just, yeah, everything just was very, very challenging. So we basically bisected every single car park as a separate entity, as a separate business to understand the modelling of every single hour in those car parks. And what we did at the time was we opened up the doors for Rundle, 
Gawla and also uh, White Street Car Park, ones that can access Rumble Mall and the rest of the precincts. We did offer a very, uh, a very attractive marketing deal, so it was very simple for people to understand what we're trying to pitch for the first three hours. Um, to try to attract people to the city. Um, it was successful, it attracted a lot of people in, but it cost the council a lot of money. And the reason that the council decided to stop the trial uh, after it concluded is because it was an issue to do with the budget. This is on repeat. Every single um, council that I've seen um, be elected, this is every time we attempt the same thing. Um, the question is a demand. Yes, there is an issue with the East End at the moment, but the reason I do support a review and I support a deferral uh, is because I believe those car parks, from, from a policy perspective, um, Council Martin, need to be addressed a bit differently. If Council is serious about short-term parking in the city, then we should eliminate long-term parking in those car parks and focus on short-term parking so we can attract people to the city. Um, we should you know, also take into account that the Wilsons of the world and the other car park owners of the world are also right players. And we are competing with those right payers with our car parks. When you put up, when we go out and put against our right payers that the first hour is free, they will be impacted, hence they still pay us rates. So we need to take them into account. We need to have an open discussion. This is one thing we've learned from our last experience when we did this. We didn't speak to those car park operators, we just made up our own decision. It's important that we also consult with those right payers and say, look, this is our intention. It may have an impact on your business. How can we work together? So there's a lot of these things that we need to consider when we're looking at our car parking model. But also the East End specifically has the most amount of car parks in that area in comparison to the rest of the city. Uh, be it on street and off street in comparison. There's so many off street car parks on that area. And I've spent, I'm not an expert in the East End, but I've spent over 12 years there um, in, in, in work. And it is a challenging place. It requires the quick spin. It requires people to to get in and out as quickly as possible. But I think we could do this smartly with good modelling. Uh, if we can get some modelling done as part of the deferral, it would be really crucial because if we can understand how many people currently go past the one hour, what can we charge for the second hour to recoup some of that cost, and potentially what do we need to do to speak to some of those businesses, Lord Mayor, in the area that may be prepared to chip in somehow through uh, an incentive. If everyone buys something from them, they, they pay a dollar, et cetera. But look, I'll leave it here because uh, my time's up, but uh, look, I look forward to working with the group in, in this deferral and seeing how we could uh, come up with a better outcome. Thank you, <coughs> Councillor Abiyad. Uh, Councillor Corbell. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I, um, I think it's important, what, what Councillor Martin's really trying to achieve is um, some support for the East End, and I think this as, a, as an isolated measure isn't necessarily the best course of action because it's not fully explored, it hasn't come from our administration, it's not really backed by any particular science and, uh, and data. And I think what would be better, what would be an enhanced um, approach to this would be for us to defer and for the administration to go away and have a look at what's, what's happening in the area and what are some other levers that maybe we can pull. And this might be one of them to support the East End. There's so much happening in the next few years. Um, we've got the, the University of Adelaide's Master Plan, the Royal Adelaide Hospital move, the OBAN, which is happening at the moment, the Adelaide Botanical High School development, Gawler Place upgrade, the upgrade of the tram. I actually think that there's so much that's going to be happening that will impact on the economic activity that we really should have a look at a comprehensive plan to support the East End. And it probably will include um, making some changes to the U Park down that end, but it might be that there's other things that we can do, and it's better to put it in um, through one comprehensive plan. Thank you, Councillor Corbell. Councillor Martin? Lord Mayor, with uh, um, respect to my colleagues, um, and, and I take on board what they're saying, when I raised this, uh, I wasn't looking for a set of reasons why this wouldn't work. I was proposing what I thought was a simple, quick uh, uh, help to the, uh, the ratepayers in that area. Um, I wasn't looking for another report. We've had a report. We had one on the East End that Councillor Abiyat uh, um, moved last year, which came to us, which identified all of the risks and problems. We've had a report about parking in uh, U Park in Rundle Street from the administration saying, look, first hour is not so great, let's consider third or fourth hour. Uh, we were 
anticipating there might be another report early this year, it didn't come. Reports are great, and indeed, I recall when I worked as a senior executive, I always used to call for a report when I wanted to slow something down. And that is the impact of calling for yet another report. If there is a report to be delivered to us in May or June, it will be July or August when we consider it and all of the same objections will come up again and we'll find more reasons not to do it. Why can we not just be bold and do something for our ratepayers? It's $200,000. We've been talking about $3.1 million for gateways no one's ever seen. $200,000 is all we're asking for. It's not such a great amount to support the businesses that support this city, that support this council's income. I ask everyone to think very carefully about this. Do something positive for our ratepayers rather than find a reason not to. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Vershaw. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I, uh, I totally support uh, Councillor Martin's intention. Uh, the principle behind this is to do something and do something soon. We've known about the, the uh, Royal Adelaide Hospital moving for a very long time and we've had many reports and yet we've yet to see something uh, proactive in that space. Um, I would, having only read the administration comment tonight, um, I would seek some further information but I'd also seek some suggestions because, or even if we go through a workshop because we have yet to see anything that actually shows us some determined action in that area and how we are actually going to support these businesses. Um, if it is deferred, if the deferral is successful, I'll support it when it comes back. Thank you, Councillor Vershaw. Councillor Slama. Lord Mayor, I speak against the amendment and fully back Councillor Martin on this one. As an East Ender, if you allow me just to talk who our main competition is down there, it's Burnside. People are driving out of the East End because they can get the free parking at the Burnside shopping village. They can get more than one hour, they can get a few hours. And I hear it more often, if you look at the retail mix on the ground floor, the, the high-end retail needs to be accessible. And I, I just about guarantee if you walk down every retail in the street today and say, how would you feel about an hour of uh, free parking up front, you get the nod straight away. And so we don't need another report, as you say, we don't need paperwork to tell us this or, or another workshop or an expert to tell us this. We know. As an East Ender, I'm a bit of an expert, not the best one, but I know enough that this is a good, sensible motion and it sends a signal to our ratepayers, to the businesses, say, hey, we are doing something for you, we're listening. Councillor Ferrand. Yes. Um, quick fixes, magic bullets. We've heard them all before and there may be value in this recommendation. However, I think we need some more evidence-based discussion around this and that's what a report will provide to us. Um, as Councillor Aviat has already uh, mentioned, he thought he had the magic bullet for a problem earlier and it just didn't work. It was a huge hit on our revenue uh, and, and our budget and I think we can hold off um, and until I re this report comes in, because it may be, as Councillor Corbell has already suggested, that there are other strategies that need to be looked at very carefully and, and, and perhaps presented as a package, not just one quick fix, because that one quick fix, which seems absolutely reasonable, may not be what is needed at all and may not address the issues that the East End will be confronted with. It's only a short term, a, sh a very specified time frame for us to hold off uh, and I think then we're better able to make an informed decision. And you know, 200,000 plus uh, 15,000 promo for promotion, it all starts to add up and if it doesn't fix the problem, on its own, uh, that's a lot of money down the gurgler that our ratepayers would be very prepared to allocate to some other, would much prefer to allocate to some other greatly needed project. So let's just hold off for a short amount of time, it's specified here, and I think that way we're better off, we're in a better position to make an informed, more evidence-based decision, not just go for the what we think are the quick fixes.
Members, before I hand you back to the DLM for a sum up on the proposed amendment, I'll speak to the proposed amendment if I may. If I was fortunate enough to vote for the proposed deferral, I would vote against it. Uh, for many of the reasons which Councillor Martin, I think, very clearly illustrated. Um, members, we have an incredible habit of being extraordinarily academic about many matters, but we are not a university. We are a council. And from everything I'm hearing, trade since September 2016 has been difficult for many retailers in the City of Adelaide. We know that we have a hospital which will, will be relocating. There will be some 5,000 workers who will be relocating to the West End. This is a 12-month measure. We still have an overarm which is under construction. We know that's probably slowed the visitation to the Rundle Street car park already. We know that project will be finished in approximately December. We also know that car parking offers sometimes take a little bit of time to take hold. And members, you have some low-hanging fruit in front of you, as proposed by Councillor Martin. DLM. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I thank councillors for their comments, and, and I too totally support Councillor Martin's intent. I understand what he's trying to do is to support the East End, and, and as, uh, as you just mentioned, Lord Mayor. Um, but I just urge members not to make a decision with only half the information. We're not calling for a report here. What we're doing is indicating that the report's already on our way. It's already being, pre being prepared. And it would be, um, in my view, not prudent to charge ahead with something when we know that there's some, um, some information already being prepared to assist us in our decision making. This is not going to slow us down because um, the intent of my amendment is that we bring this back in the first meeting in, uh, in June um, so that we are in a position to be, make a fully informed decision that we can implement or not implement as of the 1st of July. So we're not slowing anything down, we're just making sure that we're better informed. Thank you. Members, those in favour? Those against? Right, members, those in favour, we'll just do a count, please. Those in favour? Of the amendment. Of the amendment. Of the deferral. Of the deferral. Yep. Okay, well, I cast against the, uh, the, the motion to defer. So it's lost. So I take you back to the substantive. No need for further Any debate on the substantive members? I'll, I'll ask you to sum up in a moment, Councillor Martin. We can have debate on the substantive. Given that, that um, there was split support for this, um, I actually think that the administration should take it on board that we are seeking to have um, an informed report of some sort or a workshop whereby elected members can feel um, comfortable and satisfied that we are doing everything that we can to support the East End and that although this will more than likely now be successful, Many of us in this room, probably all of us actually, think that there are, could be other things that we could be doing, even if it's in the form of an e-news update. I think we should we should actually have a forum to discuss this. Okay, Councillor Martin, Councillor Antic, sorry, had, do you wish to speak? Uh, no, no, thanks. You don't? Councillor Martin, to sum up on the substantive? Um, look, Lord Mayor, just briefly, uh, I would appreciate members' support on this. Uh, I understand their concerns, but I say to you that if it's half as successful as what the, the same action has been in the central market, then there will be 75,000 more people in the coming year visiting the city, and that's a substantial gain. Um, so I would just ask members to please consider our ratepayers, our businesses, who are themselves very concerned about what's waiting. Members, those in favour? Those against? Carried. Thank you, members. Members, I take you to item 15.2, Councillor Corbell, motion I notice, Green City Plan, page 327. Councillor, the floor is yours. Thank you, Lord Mayor. 
Um, I'm just going to give a bit of context around where this has come from. Our strategic plan, the City of Adelaide 2016 to 2020, actually talks um, primarily to... Oh, I need to say Members, I've got a second with DLM, so Deputy Lord Mayor seconds, Councillor Corbell, back to you. Thank you. To a few items around green infrastructure, um, and one of them is to plant 1,000 trees in the built-up area of the city by 2020, and the other one is um, to increase the amount of green space in the city by 100,000 square metres by 2020, which I think are really admirable. Um, but having had a look at other cities around Australia and their um, urban forest strategies, there's a lot more detail that could be included in our targets for greening our city and green infrastructure. So noting that we do actually have a green city plan, um, which the administration have been working on, I've itemised some key areas around um, improved soil, air, strong water quality, biodiversity and climate that I'd like included in the green plan, just to give our administration um, some guidance around what we as an elected body would be looking for, noting that there are no current references in any of our strategic documents around um, key objectives which are measurable, benchmarked and time bound for making inroads into greening our city. So it's the second pillar of our strategic plan is to green our city. And I think we all want to see more trees planted and we want to see green walls and rooftop gardens and beautiful um, lush verges. And there's a necessity for it as well, given that we've got climate change happening as we speak. Um, we'll, have see, we'll see in the future more extreme weather events. We'll see a drier, um, a drier climate. Um, heat waves, and that's all going to have an effect on the amenity of our city and the opportunity for people to be able to enjoy um, experiencing the outdoors. So I think there's things that we could be doing now to make improvements to our city, and it's really important that we see this happening on our term of council. And I'd like to also acknowledge the work that the administration have put into helping me in wording this, and all the work that they've already done behind the scene. Thank you, Councillor Corbell. Deputy Lord Mayor and Seconder. Reserve my right. <coughs> Members to the floor. Councillor Clarehan. Yes. Um, just very quickly, I, I do support this. I think it really is very important. And I saw a heat map of the city last week, and it's quite surprising uh, exactly how a lot of the areas within the city, and including North Adelaide, uh, heat up. And actually show on on the on the film that's been taken, and I think uh, that is a concern. And we really we imagine that because we've got street trees, etc., that we're well protected. But in fact, given the number of trees that have been cut down and are continuing to be cut down for to enable uh, development. Uh, our canopies and our greenery is reducing rapidly and we need to work quickly and thoroughly uh, in counteracting that um, because uh, we will be faced with severe um, extreme weather events and particularly um, very, very hot summers. So I totally support uh, this motion. Thank you, Councillor Clarehan. Members, any further debate? I hand you back, DLM. You reserved your right. Would you wish to speak? The mover, Councillor Corbell, floor is yours to sum up. <laughs> Councillor Corbell has summed up. Councillor Antic, stop bragging, Councillor Antic. Those in favour, members? Those against? Carry. <laughs> well done, Councillor Antic. We are proud of you. Well done, Councillor Corbell. Members, that takes us on to our next motion on notice, which is <coughs> Councillor Clare, our motion on notice regarding Jeff Costa, page 333 of your papers. Uh, thank you, Lord Clare. Mayor. I, I, it's quite a long motion. Uh, I'm just wondering if I could take it as read. Yes. Members, you're happy to take this as read. You are seconded by the look of things by Councillor Wilkinson. So, thank yes, you. we'll take it as read and you thank can speak to Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, this is uh, in response to an ongoing major issue in Jeff Cott Street. Um, and there was a meeting on site uh, of councillors uh, and council administration, uh, even uh, former um, administration members who had a bit of history in relation to um, Jeff Cott Street. There is a major drainage issue there and the extent of it 
uh, needs to be further investigated. One would imagine that the drainage is north-south when in fact um, administration informed us that it's east-west, which is just is quite a mystery as to why that is. Um, the infrastructure is in great need of repair and improvement and it's really um, something that shouldn't be put off any longer. Since I've been on council, I've had Jeff Cott Street on the agenda and we're still waiting. And we talk about gateways to the city. I know, thank goodness, we didn't have a planned gateway for Jeffcott Street because it would be a major embarrassment given that water uh, pools in the area and just doesn't run off at all after heavy rainfall. Uh, it's a danger, I know, of someone who's already busted an ankle trying to jump over the flooded area. Um, and it's uh, really quite unacceptable. And we go back to the analogy of the house it truly is like putting up the chandeliers when the bottom of your house is flooded. Your pipes are blocked, some of them are broken, and you've got major flooding problems. Why would you worry about putting up chandeliers? We really do need to get back to basics and get this problem fixed ASAP. Thank you very much, Councillor Clear. And before I pass to your second to Councillor Wilkinson, Acting CEO, you just want to say a very quick word to help the debate? Through you, Lord Mayor. Um, members, tonight there's been a number of discussions under the previous item in relation to the um, business plan and budget. So I'd just like to um, identify that point four talks about the report informing future um, quarterly financial reviews of next year's budget. I'd be suggesting that we actually um, delete point four and actually allow it to come back in time to inform the budget discussions. Um, identify the fact that there are a number of other priorities that were suggested to help fund this. I was going to leave it until that time, but I, I think it does make sense. I'm very happy to vary the motion and remove point four until we come back to discuss So members, just being procedural that matters, could I have a member from the floor suggest that be varied? Oh. Oh, okay. DLM? Yes. yes. So um, we I need agree. to get the wording right. If we could do that together, please. So just delete paragraph four and. Okay. And your seconder on this matter was the DLM. So, DLM, you're No, it was Councillor Wilkinson. Sorry, where am I? You're wrong. Sorry, you're right. I'm wrong. Uh, Councillor Wilkinson we'll is the seconder. Um, you're happy with that. So, members, just looking to the floor, your comfort in that variation. We're good. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Acting CEO. You. Councillor Clareham. I now go to the seconder. Councillor Wilkinson, the floor is yours. Uh, yes, no, I, I um, was at the meeting with Councillor Clareham and Councillor Martin and um, Council staff, and um, uh, I, I was going to ask for a little bit more clarification in the wording, talking about curb and water table restoration and where missing reinstatement. But I think the staff are clear on exactly what our intention is. We're not looking at a concrete water table, just blue stone curb. It's all blue stone curb and water table to be restored using existing stones. Um, so that's all, all clear. Um, and um, uh, I think it's, it is high time that we gave this uh, important gateway street to, to Adelaide um, the, um, the priority that it deserves. And it's one of the few streets that the council hasn't mucked up by replacing the bluestone curb water table with concrete, which has happened all through the 60s and 70s and 80s, so, um, uh, particularly in the 70s. So it's a great opportunity for us to really get this right. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Corbell. I'm going to support this, and um, I'm actually interested to note that it's been said earlier in the chamber that um, previous terms of council have, by the elective members, the elective body put this forward to the administration that they wanted to see this work done, and it's been ongoing year after year after year, council after council after council. I think we. This is again feeding into why we need to be able to have that progress of the previous councils. Um, motions and how they're progressing um, because we really do need to do something about this and I, I kind of agree with you why are we spending money on gateways although it sounds great and I'm sure it's needed when we've got some serious issues um, down our main thoroughfares which are really technically gateways. Thank you Cor Councillor Corbell. Any further debate members? I hand you back to Councillor Clarehan to sum up. Sum it up Lord. <coughs> members I put this before you those in favour. Those against? 
We carry item 15.3, thank you Councillor Clarehan, which takes us on to item 15.4, motion and notice from Councillor Corbell regarding cooperate, cooperation between the Adelaide or the City of Adelaide and other councils without an apostrophe. <laughs> Councillor Corbell. <laughs> Thank you. I'll second that. Seconded by the DLM. Floor is yours, Councillor Corbell. Thank you. Um, so the administration comments being provided to you. Just to give you a bit of context about this one, um, I became familiar with um, the, re the re Eastern Regional Alliance, and um, I've really been impressed to hear some of the things that they've achieved. Um, this alliance was set up um, under an MOU in 2008 between the cities of Burnside, Campbelltown, Norwood, Paynham, St Peter's, Prospect, Tittery Gully, Unley and the town of Walkerville. And the whole idea behind it was that the councils in that area collaborate. They work together, um, they put in for joint applications for state and federal funding, um, they advocate for um, at those levels of government for um, areas of interest and things that they want to progress. Um, and they also use it as a means to achieve efficiencies and to deliver more services to their community by working together, by pooling their resources, by sharing. And in fact, even last year, just in um, February, the cities of Charles Sturt, Port Adelaide, Enfield, Holdfast Bay and West Torrens um, came together to um, formulate a strategy called the Building Western Adelaide strategy. And it's all about creation of new jobs and support for businesses. If you have a look at all of these councils on the local government map, if all of these councils that surround the city of Adelaide are now working together. You have the Eastern Alliance and you have the um, what's happening in the West. And in addition to that, you've got councils in the North and councils in the South working together. And I'm interested to know as an elected member, what's the city of Adelaide doing to work together with other councils? What have we done historically? What are we doing now? What are our plans to work together in the future with other councils for various reasons? Um, and are we fitting in with any of these activities already? I know that there are some um, activities that we already undertake, such as with our IT department, um, but beyond that, I'm not really familiar. And I think that there could be a whole lot more that we're doing to be able to deliver more to our community. And I actually find it really interesting that we're not a part of any of these strategies or alliances. Um, so this motion seeks, as an elected body, for us to put it on the agenda formally that we wish our administration to um, go about providing us with an update on what other councils around South Australia are doing to work together and what are the opportunities for our council. Thank you, Councillor Corbell. Members, those in favour? <laughs> that was a summer. Yes. Oh, sorry, my mistake. Sorry, I'm, I'm in a time warp. Deputy Lord Mayor is a seconder. Oh, well, just very briefly, I really thank Councillor Corbell for this motion. It wasn't actually until she um, uh, she put it up as a motion on notice that I realised that how much I didn't know about this area, what we're currently doing, and what the opportunities might be. So I, I, I realised I would really appreciate this information. I think our ratepayers will really appreciate this information too. So I look forward to the report. Apologies, members. I'm obviously I'm sometimes being labelled that I'm too slow moving things along. I was just trying to do the opposite. Councillor Clarehan. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, just very quickly, I think um, I, I would like to look at opportunities with some of our regional um, councils as well, uh, that there may be opportunities there. I certainly know that some of them have expressed an interest um, at various meetings uh, to work with the Adelaide City Council and to look at opportunities for collaboration, be it through tourism or, as you say, um, uh, more infrastructures. I mean, our Brown Hill Creek is a perfect example of the City of Adelaide working with upstream councils. So we do do it. I know we've worked with the City of Unley as well with IT issues. So I'm, I hope to be pleasantly surprised at the extent to which we already are, but please don't forget our regional cousins. Thank you, councillors. We now go back to Councillor Corbell to sum up an absence of any further debate. <coughs> Members, those in favour? Those against? We carry item 15.4. Members, motions without notice. Item 16, Councillor Slama. Lord Mayor, I uh, move that Council calls on the Lord Mayor to write to Amazon to promote the City of Adelaide's Smart City Agenda 
and administration to provide a report on how council can best support local retailers in effectively com competing and utilising e-commerce platforms such as Amazon, Alibaba, eBay and others as a continuing, sorry, contributing adjunct to the profit profitability of their own businesses. And I'll seek a seconder. Uh, Councillor Vershaw is your seconder. Councillor Slama, the floor is yours. Thank you. I um, also want to acknowledge in a um, real brief but to the ComSec and the Deloitte's reports that's come out only last week and it singled out the the retail industry growth in South Australia to be 3.8 per cent. That doesn't mean a lot to us, but it's actually nation leading for a change, which is great news for South Australia. And the decision, of course, by Amazon to establish uh, warehouses, local warehouses in each state can be seen by retailers and by some as a bit of a threat, a threat to the momentum of, of, of what's happening in our retail industry. And just to give you some perspective um, about Amazon, um, I'll do a little bit online and, and have been aware. Amazon has been around since 1994 in, in Australia, so it's not, not new to Australia, but currently 7.6 million people, which is about 40% of Australia's entire population, buy a product on Amazon every month, and it's growing. They will take a predicted $4 billion of the annual revenue in Australia. So a big contender, a big contender coming. Um, Amazon at the moment has 300 million active customers located in about 180 countries. So if you're a retailer based in Adelaide, an online retailer that maybe doesn't have a shop, you have access to 180 countries and 300 million customers just by looking at a screen. 125 fulfilment centres, like local warehouses all over the world with over 1 billion items serviced out of those centres globally. To put it into some local perspective, another e-platform, carsales.com, many of us know. There are still car yards everywhere, but car sales have come along and today they have 7 million listed cars online, which is the combined population of South Australia and Victoria combined, just in terms of numbers of cars available online. The growth in, in the retail car industry sector is still there and is a good example of how that industry has adopted the e-platforms and used it to their advantage. Um, there's no doubt that the, amounts, the announcement that Amazon is coming to us um, is going to you know, cause some issues in, this, um, in the retail industry. But what we need to do is not be worried about it, I think, and what I would like to do is um, um, what I'd like to do is see what council, what we can do as a council to help our businesses and help our retailers in planning. And what are, what are we doing, what are they doing? What are we doing to help them in plan and protect our retailers in doing so? And how can we ensure that our retailers have the skills and the knowledge and the competitive advantage and resili resilience in facing um, this giant Goliath that's approaching our industry. Thank you, Councillor Slava. Your second bill was Councillor Bishop. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, in terms of um, writing to uh, Amazon, I think it would also be a, a possible suggestion to um, do it either in concert or <coughs> in addition to something from the state government um, off the capital city agenda. Um, Purely and simply because if Amazon is looking to sit up, set up in Australia and we can uh, persuade them to look our way, I think that would be a great outcome for all concerned. Um, I know that administration um, through Enterprise Adelaide uh, does do work in terms of um, e-platforms and, and digital use for businesses, but a refocus on the utilisation of e-commerce platforms uh, can only help our retailers become more competitive in this environment and it's not going to go away. So the more that we can embrace the future that is there in front of us, I don't know about you, but I certainly do shopping on um, uh, e-commerce platforms um, as well as, as normal retail and it's just part of the future. I watch how my, my children use them, it's just second nature and it doesn't stop them going to retail stores, it just is another avenue for them to actually uh, purchase what they want to. Um, so I, I uh, totally support this and I would encourage our members, our fellow members to support this as well.
you, Councillor Vershaw. Members, to the floor. <coughs> Councillor Slama, to sum up. Sum up. Members, those in favour? Those against? <coughs> motion carried. Members, do I have any other motions without notice? I don't. I will move you on to item 17. We've got a number of matters to consider in confidence, please, members. So the first of which is the uh, uh, audit committee report item, uh, sorry, item 18.1.1. Can I have a move and to move that item into confidence? Councillor Corbell, seconded by Councillor Martin. Those in favour? Carried. The second of which is item 18.2.1, a procedural matter. Can I please have a move and to move that into confidence? Councillor Cleran, uh, seconded by Deputy Lord Mayor. Those in favour? Carried. Thank you, members. Item 18.2.2, Progress of Confidential Motions by EMs. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Clearhand, seconded by Councillor Martin. Those in favour? Carried. Item 18.3.1, uh, a uh, question on notice from uh, Councillor Martin. Can I have a mover, please, to move that into confidence? Councillor Clearhand, seconded by Councillor Antic. Members, I'm going to introduce a, uh, an, an additional item, 18.4.1 for the purposes. It'll be a question on notice from Councillor Moran in confidence <coughs> regarding an update on a legal matter. So can I have a mover to move that into confidence too? Councillor Corbell, seconded by Councillor Vershaw. Those in favour? We carry that. So we've moved all of those items into confidence members and I ask uh, those persons not directly with these matters, directly related to these matters, Please leave the chamber and thank you very much for your attendance.
Okay, members, I formally declare the meeting closed at 8.32 p.m. Uh, this evening on Wednesday the 26th of April. Members, thank you very much for your attendance and your participation. <laughs> members of administration, thank you for your support. We declare the meeting closed. Thank you.